All right. Phew. I finally got this thing uh, to where it'll stay in one spot. Now, I've um, tried to give this thing as natural a pose as I could. Uh, that's about how it would look if he were holding it straight out of you, so I think it looks pretty natural. Now, I'm going to begin um, sculpting in the new details for the wrist and try to replace the lost detail that broke off when I foolishly decided to use this to remove um, excess material. And I am using this uh, stuff called um, Aves or Aves. How do you pronounce that? Maybe Aves. I've heard it both ways. Um, comes in several. It comes in a couple different sizes. In a uh, in two tubs like this. This is the part B, and um, this is wonderful stuff. It's got um, you mix it one one has a one to one ratio of mixing, and uh, it mixes fairly easily. You don't have to worry about getting a perfect consistency, you know, a perfect uh, one to one ratio. It's completely non toxic. It uh, can sculpt. Use, you can sculpt it using water, of all things. You can you can use water. Uh, they they have their own solvent. Um, you can use alcohol. Uh, you can even use you know your spit if you wanted to. This stuff will um, is very you know it's harmless. In fact, at the demonstration at Wonderfest, I've actually seen someone uh, actually eat this stuff. It's completely safe. So, um, you know, don't feel like, uh, you know, don't feel like your kids can't use this for, in other words, uh, of course, at um, about 25 bucks for uh, for t a uh, one pound, for a two pound tub, um, I would refrain from doing that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff this into the hand. I could just um, superficially coat to make a shell, but I want this piece to have some strength. So I'm going to uh, shove as much of this stuff in there as I can, hopefully doing it without disrupting without disrupting the um, the hold that the hand has on the wrist too much. And hopefully this will uh, fill in the um, hopefully this will make a new joint for the wrist and keep it stable. Uh, when you're kit bashing or um, scratch building or re-sculpting or anything like this where you're repositioning parts you're not going to have a um, you're not going to have alignment pins anymore you're not going to have a uh, real mating surface for the uh, for the two parts that you've separated and that you want to reposition so uh, if you want to do this if you want to do it right you're going to have to uh, get some putty and um, well, not only because you're going to have to re it, but also because you're going to want to give it some um, something to bite on. Besides just um, the edge of the plastic piece. And um, this uh, Aves epox epoxy putty, or whatever it's called, is phenomenal at that. Not only does it... Um, bond with styrene and ABS fairly easily but it also um, will dry rock solid which can be a problem because it's slightly harder than styrene or ABS and scribing on it may result in having a line segment that's uh, either too is going to be too wide, or actually not too wide, but too narrow compared to the rest of the uh, scribe lines on your kit. And so uh, you want to make sure that any line drawing or sculpting that you do on it, you do while it's still, um, while it's, uh, 
well, while it's wet, for the lack of a better term. Now, what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto, and I'm going to just define the wrist like so. This is kind of this is going to be kind of a mini sculpting tutorial, and I say mini because I'm not getting into too much detail. Um, then what I like to do is just slice off pieces. What I like to do is slice off pieces a little bit at a time, kind of retouch it, and then uh, wet my finger with my tongue and feather in the new putty. This takes a little bit of doing, but once you're done, you won't have to do too much modifications on it. Now I will say this, because it's slightly translucent, it's impossible to tell whether or not you're um, actually... Oh, crud. Yeah, there we go. That's that's a problem. See there, I accidentally moved my removed the hand, and it pushed the um, pushed the epoxy putty up. Well, um, anyway, once you do the uh, top of the wrist like that, if you're like me, if you're a klutz like me, and you uh, <laughs> accidentally broke broke it, um, down here on the bottom you're going to want to put some new ribbing to suggest his suit material has a flex point right there. Has flexible material right there. See that there? Doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording right now and do some in-depth sculpting and when I'm done I will uh, turn it back on. All right, I finally got this Iron Man arm sculpted after uh, some fits with the uh, with the uh, the epoxy putty, and I'm gonna just get a stronger light source here real quick, and I'm gonna show you what I did. Kind of need this so you can tell the new you can see the detail. Um, if you look, all right here. I have attempted, um, I've attempted to recreate that ribbing effect that you can see on the original kit part, uh, and make it make it appear as though it's flexing right there. The way you do that is you take your knife like so. Just let me switch this off. You take your knife and you roll it across your knife one at a time in even in even um, strokes at an even depth and you make sure that your knife point ends up at the same spot every time this ensures that your um, it looks as though it's uh, flexing from a certain from a certain point I also fixed uh, a problem up here where the pieces uh, were not aligned. They aligned fine down here, but up here for some reason this uh, the inside of the forearm uh, dips inward slightly. So um, anyway, I'm gonna have, but I can't really finish this arm tonight. I gotta f set it aside so that um, the putty can set without you know fear of being damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up, and then I'm gonna. Uh, start work on the head and I think that will wrap up this video well not the head but uh, not just the head but the uh, the chest as well